Hey everybody, welcome back to Monarch Mom DIY. This is Cindy. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope you'll hit that subscribe button and also the bell so you'll be notified of all my future uploads. And welcome back to those of you who are already subscribed. Today I have four thrift store makeovers. Our first one is using this wooden frame, three eight by 10 canvases, some floral, uh, moss, some jute twine from Dollar Tree, and a few other items I'll explain as we go. The first thing I'm going to do is give this wood frame just not a solid coat, but kind of a rustic looking coat of white Waverly chalk paint. And you'll see I'm also going to make sure to paint the inside and outside edges of the frame for a completed look. Next, I'm taking three of these eight by 10 stretched canvases from the Dollar Tree and I am painting them with my Waverly chalk paint in the color Truffle. Um, I'm not going to need to paint the edges and you'll see why in just a moment. And because I'm going for that rustic look, I'm not worried that the paint is completely solidly covering the canvases. If it's a little streaky, that's even better. So I did a Google image search and I believe I just put in flower outline, bird outline, and butterfly outline. I printed these out on cardstock and I'm just cutting them out. I'm using these as a stencil for the three images that I'm going to paint on the center of these canvases. I decided my canvases weren't quite rustic looking enough, so I decided to add just some dry brush streaks of white chalk paint over the truffle brown once it was dry. Once the canvases were dry, the next step was to take a staple remover and remove all the staples from the back of the canvases. And then I'm going to remove the canvases from the wooden frame. Next, I'm taking some hot glue or some wood glue and gluing all three of these wood frames together. And then I'm simply cutting the excess canvas from around each of my brown areas that are painted. And actually, you could cut right up to the brown because part of it will be behind the frame. Now, this next step was lots of fun, but a little messy and it does take some time. You've seen me use this moss before and I'm just taking some a little area at a time and I'm going to now cover the front only of my wooden frames with the floral moss. Sorry, my glasses keep getting in the way, but um, you can see what I'm doing here. Uh, just do a little area at a time and um, use more moss than you need so that it kind of protects your fingers from the hot glue. Once you've done the entire thing, I just kind of lightly rub and pull off any moss that is hanging and not fully attached. Um, you just want to be able to see the outline of each of the frames and you don't want it too much covering the center. Of course, if you find any areas that are a little bald, go ahead and cover those up. Now for my next step, I have each of my stencils on my canvases. I'm just tracing with a pencil and then I'm going to paint them, paint the outline shape um, with celery chalk paint. It's a light green. I love using it in the spring um, and I think it just looks really nice on this dark brown background. 
So like I said, here's the celery chalk paint and using a very small tipped brush, I'm doing the outline. This here is the flower. Um, there are other ways you could do this. If you wanted, you could paint the canvas, the celery. Then when that's dry, set the stencil down and then paint the brown around it so that when you lift up the stencil, you're left with the celery. I just chose to do it this way for this project um, and it really didn't take too, too long. I think the key is to have a brush with a small enough um, set of bristles so that you can get, especially on the butterfly and the bird, in those small areas. But the idea is not for these to look realistic. It's just, I don't know, do you call it a motif uh, where it's just kind of the shape with no dimension and just um, these three to remind us of spring. So once I had painted all three of my shapes, I'm going to go ahead now and glue the canvas to the back of each wooden frame. Again, sorry about my head in there. Sometimes where my camera is makes it a little difficult. So as you can see, just the brown part of the canvas does fit behind the frame. And so I'm just pressing each of these on so that it's, I believe it's called a reverse canvas where now the actual canvas is on the back of the frame but showing through to the front, if that makes sense. So we've got the butterfly, the flower, and then the bird at the bottom. And now all three of them are attached to our moss covered frame that we made out of the wood frames from each of the canvases. Here, sorry, it's a little out of frame. I'm just taking two pieces of jute twine and I'm hot gluing them to the top canvas, the back of the top canvas. I think I'm gonna scoot it down here in just a second. There we go. So using my little finger protector, all of you guys, uh, made sure I was using that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue one side of the string and then I'm going to lay my wood frame. Remember that frame we painted white at the very beginning. I'm gonna lay that down and so each of these jute twines is gonna go around the top of the wood frame and then glue it back to the back of the canvases if that makes sense. So these three pictures are going to hang in the center of the white wooden frame. You'll see what I mean here in just a moment. So here are the three pictures hanging from the frame. I decided to use two of these metal words in this three pack. I'm using the word welcome right here and then spring right here. And I just hot glued those onto the moss to finish my project. For my second project, I'm taking this birdhouse shelf, some moss, some chalk paint, this glass jar, some wood hearts, and some jute twine. The first thing I'm going to do, I got this for $2 at Goodwill. It just stands on a tabletop. I'm removing all this moss, the fake birds, and the uh, wood heart that is attached at the bottom. I really wanted a neutral farmhouse look for this birdhouse, so I'm taking my mineral chalk paint and giving the entire thing one or two coats to cover over all of the other painting that was done very beautifully, but just does not fit my decor style at all.
Once the mineral chalk paint was dry, I took some masking tape and I'm going to tape off around the two peaked roof areas so that I can paint those with my darker gray called Elephant. I did also decide to paint this shelf part with the darker gray also just to give it a little bit more dimension. Here I have my Waverly chalk paint in the color white and two of these wood hearts that I also showed in my thrift store haul. I'm just going to give each one a coat of white chalk paint on the front and the sides. And this is always the fun part, taking off the tape and seeing the nice crisp paint lines with the two different colors of gray paint on the birdhouse. Next I'm taking this glass jar from Dollar Tree and I only want the base of it. I liked the square shortness of it so I'm removing all of the metal pieces from the jar. And just a little bit of Goo Gone on this piece of paper towel gets the rest of that sticky residue from the sticker off of the bottom. To decorate the top of the jar just a little bit, I'm just taking some of my jute twine from Walmart. This is the very end of my roll. I'll have to go back and get some more. But just using little dots of hot glue every once in a while, I'm attaching the jute twine starting at the top. And I'll just wrap it around three or four times just to cover that top part of the jar. And to finish off the top part of the birdhouse, I'm just hot gluing these two white hearts, covering over the holes that were left from the original design of this birdhouse. And then I'm taking one more little piece of the jute twine and just making a simple bow that I will then hot glue to the front of my jar. And here is the finished product. I love how this turned out just with some simple changes. For the third project, I'm taking this round wood piece I found at the thrift store. Some of these wood 
ball legs, I'm not sure what they're called, pegs of some sort, and this printable that I found online. I decided that I was going to make a footed riser. These are very popular right now in farmhouse decor. So I'm removing the little feet that were on the bottom because the bottom is now going to be the top of my project. I'm just kind of laying out where I'm going to put these little feet. They are flat on the one side. I pulled these off of another project that I started and never quite finished. So now I have sanded the bottom so that everything is nice and flat. And I'm going to give this a coat of Waverly chalk paint in the color color pool. I love this light robin's egg blue. I used it last spring for a couple of my DIY projects and I really like that I can bring in some color with this color of paint but still have it be a neutral tone. I decided to also paint the feet blue, but I'm doing them in a navy blue. Um, this is acrylic paint, so as you can see, it doesn't cover quite as well as chalk paint. So I did have to do two coats on these little five little feet that I'm going to glue to the bottom of my riser. Here again, you see my technique of using a skewer in order to be able to paint. And here I am hot gluing my dried feet to the bottom of the riser. I did paint both sides of the wooden round piece with the pool and hot gluing the dark navy feet to the bottom. And here it is all flipped over. It sits nice and flat. And I found this printable online. It is a little small for this size wood. So I'm going to attempt to free draw the wreath and the words with my pencil. I'm going to link in the description box and if I can figure out how to do a card right here at the top, I will link a video where I show how to transfer wording to your project. But this was pretty basic, just drawing some circles, adding some random leaves with a paint pen, and then writing out the words. The great thing about pencil is you can always erase and go back and fix it. So first I'm writing the print home and getting that centered, and then I will add the bless this in cursive. And here's how the finished product turned out. I love how you can just dress these up for your decor. My last project for today is this planter bucket for sewing that we found. I'm also going to use a pizza pan and a splatter screen and some chalk paint and spray paint, I should say. First, I'm going to take my black Waverly chalk paint in the color ink, and I'm going to paint the legs of this I don't even know what to call it. I'm gonna call it a sewing basket. Um, apparently, what a lot of you told me is that in the day, these also came with a wooden lid that was hinged that would uh, flap back, I guess, so you could kind of either take the lid all the way off or just have half of it. But um, here's what it looks like. I'm also painting the handle with my black chalk paint and just being really careful that it doesn't flop down and get paint on other parts. I decided for my farmhouse decor, I was going to do white and black for this item, and I'm going to turn it into a little side table. You'll see what I do to make the lid. 
So to make the lid for my table, I'm using this splatter screen that has this little handle and also a pizza pan. I measured this beforehand to make sure that it would fit on the top of my bucket. And what I'm going to do with these two items is after removing the little handle from the splatter screen, I'm going to take the pizza pan and the splatter screen outside to the garage and give them a really good coat of black spray paint. Now I'm taking my white Waverly chalk paint and giving kind of a light coat of white chalk paint to the top, middle, and bottom sections of my bucket all the way around. And then those raised areas, the two raised areas will become black. So before I paint the two black stripes, I'm going to use my tape like I did with the birdhouse candle holder and just put some tape on either side of both of those raised areas so that when I paint them black, there will be nice crisp lines between the black and white chalk paint. And again, the best part is removing the tape and seeing the nice crisp lines between the two different paint colors. You'll notice that my black chalk paint on this project is pretty solid, whereas I kept the white kind of light and streaky and rustic looking. So to finish my lid, I'm taking some of my E6000 glue. This time I tried these little tubes from Walmart and I'm just dotting it around the rim of the bottom of the splatter screen. And then what I'm going to do a little in the middle where that screw is, and I'm going to center it in my pizza pan. So this is going to become the lid for my box, my bucket, whatever. So you can put it this way as a lid. You can also turn it over and make it flat to use it more as a tabletop. So that's how this project turned out. I thank you so much for watching and for being a part of my channel. Please let me know in the comments which of these thrift store makeovers you liked the best and what you would like to see me do in future videos. Thanks so much. Give this video a big thumbs up and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.